let's get going. Um, so where we were last week was the whole thing of um, she she runs she's looking for him. Remember, yeah. um, and she 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 didn't want to move from her, her her bed her couch, and she told him to go away. He in essence did, but he was still in the shadows. And then he 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 um, she wakes up in the middle of the night distraught realizing she messed up and she needs him and she goes and looks for him in the, the city which is the picture of the church um, and she finds the watchman and they point her to him and and she runs to him and she clings to him and she won't let go and we ended off where he said to the 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 the, the, the maidens of or, or the daughters of Jer Jerusalem don't awaken her until in other words she's been through a hard time again just let her be refreshed and, and, and I just that's God's grace I just love that picture where he just says leave her let her just be refreshed let her just she needs a touch from me again and God knows when we need a touch from him again he, he does when it's been hard and it's been tough mm -hmm. God is gracious to just meet us in that place mm -hmm. so he does and and he says leave her until she's ready to get up so <clears throat> we, we see her and so when the curtain closes she is still clinging to him um, but now curtain rises again and we in chapter six and let's read here it says um what is that coming up from the wilderness like color like columns of smoke perfumed with myrrh and frankincense with all the fragrant um, powders of a merchant um in the tpt it says who is this one ascending from the wilderness in the pillar of glory cloud he he is fragrant with anointing oils of myrrh and frankincense, more fragrant than all the spices of the merchant. Okay, so so far in the story, he's revealed himself as the savior. Remember when we did the whole thing of the myrrh and the henna blossoms, and he revealed himself as the, what he did on the cross for us and dying on the cross. Then we had the picture of him jumping over the mountains as the resurrected king. This is a picture of the ascension. So we see the, the, the clouds that says, um, who is this? Well, there's various, whichever one you want to read. What is this coming up from the wilderness like, like columns of smoke? Um, and the other one, it says the pillar of, of glory cloud. So it's this ascending cloud. And so the picture would be this ascending cloud. And in the cloud, he is noticed. He is seen. Um, and and that, that's the picture we have here. I just want to look at a couple of things. Interestingly enough, who was led by a pillar of cloud? The Israelites. the Israelites. Where did it lead them to? The pillar of glory cloud always leads to, the, to, to, to God's promise, to God's fulfillment, to the promised land. So, so Jesus was coming out of the wilderness. The earth was a wilderness for him. Like as, as amazing as the earth is for us, he, he, don't forget he left heaven um, and is going up again. So, so it talks about him coming out of the wilderness um, like a, a clouds of smoke. So it's, it's this picture of, of the glory cloud taking him up and him um, ascending um, from the thing. And then the, the, the smell is the, the frankincense and the myrrh. Where have we had that before? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yes, and, and, yeah, yeah. So myrrh is, remember we said myrrh was suffering love? And frankincense is is um, the picture of the life and ministry of Jesus. It's 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 the the, the, the life and the, the 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 humanity of Jesus, the life and work of Jesus. So so again, it identifies who it's in that cloud because not, not only maybe she can't see him clearly, but by the scent and the fragrance, she knows exactly who it is because it's that, that the, the smell of the fragrance of the the frankincense and myrrh. That's that's his um, his fragrance. So there's this this picture of of that that glory cloud arising, um, of him ascending. And interestingly enough, this this is in a voice that's nowhere else in the Song of Songs. Um, so often it is actually referred to as the narrator um, or the voice of God because it's not her voice, it's not the maiden's voices, it's not whatever. It, it is a completely outsider's voice. Um, so it is it's often seen as the, the narrator um, or the voice of the Lord. So there is this picture of, of him ascending um, and then these, these spices. Now th that word merchant is one I want us to just spend a few minutes on. Anybody have any recollection in the parables of Jesus where you've heard of a merchant before? Oh, that's actually a king who, 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 who does that. The merchants were the, the, the he, he is the merchant with the pearls that, that hidden in the field, the, the pearl of great price and the parable. So it's in your notes, Matthew 13, 44 to 45. I'm just going to read that passage. It says, heaven's kingdom realm can be illustrated like this. A person discovered that there was a hidden treasure in a field. Upon finding it, 
he hid it again. Because of, the unco because of uncovering such treasure, he was overjoyed and sold all that he possessed to buy the entire field just so he could have the treasure. Heaven's kingdom realm is like a jewel merchant in search of rare pearls. Now, it's interesting. I've heard this, this, these parables preached in many different ways. But, but if you go, if the connection with scripture is, the picture in this is often we, we told that Jesus is the pearl of, of, uh, the rare pearl of great price or the treasure. But, but it doesn't make sense in the unpacking of it. Um, because firstly, he, he isn't hidden. We do not give up everything for him. That, that is in the sense of, 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 of the picture here. So the, the picture, the, the way, if, if you could take it into scripture, the way it is understood is the merchant is Jesus. And we are the pearl of great price or the treasure that he gives up and, and the field or whatever context you want to have is the world. And he gave, he, he, he gave up everything. He gave up heaven and himself and his life to purchase the world, to purchase the, the right to come in and, and impact and take hold of that treasure or that pearl, which is you and me. That's a picture of the kingdom of God. It does. And it's so beautiful. So I've left the footnote. If you'll see underneath, it explains that. Um, so that's what the, the, the footnote is there for you. Um, but it, it just, you, so, so when, again, that word, that same word, merchant, is used in this piece, it, 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 we understand that this is who he is. He's, he's the, the, that is him. He's the one who's fragrant with, with spices, with the character of him. He's the one who's paid the great price, who wants the treasure, who wants his bride, who wants the valuable one. Because sometimes when we, when we unpack the, 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 this parable in the opposite way, it becomes something that we have to do or strive or earn. Where Jesus is never something we earn. Mm -hmm. It is a free gift that he has done everything to, so that we can, we can receive it mm -hmm. and, and we can be his. And so, so what happens is sometimes it sounds great in our understanding, but it, it goes against some of the major principles of Scripture is that, that Jesus sees us as his treasure. And maybe sometimes we poo-poo that because we don't feel like that, but that, tough luck. That, that's who Jesus sees us as. He sees us as this treasure, as this pearl, that he will do anything to get and receive. Does that, does that make sense? Um, and just again, you know, we see this picture in Song of Songs, but it's not just in Song of Songs. He's not some, it's not just the only time in the Bible where we see the bridegroom doing anything to reach the bride and to win her and to take her into the journey that he has for her. It isn't. It, every, right throughout scripture, Jesus is like, this is who I am. I've come to pay the price so that I can win you, mm -hmm. so that I can have you. You are mine. You are precious to me. Mm -hmm. So it is a picture that is, is constantly through scripture. Everybody good? Yeah. Um, and then just that Ephesians 1 verse 4, for he chose us in him before the creation of the world um, to be holy, blameless in his sight. So we are that treasure that he's found and he's saying, you're, you're mine. I've chosen you and I want to do everything to win you, everything to reach you. Um, because that is, that is the mandate that he has. Every single day, when I used to teach the teenagers, it's the thing of every single day that we wake up and we got to take another breath. We have another opportunity to love him more. To, to get to know him for those who don't, to go deeper with him. It, it, he, not, nothing is by chance. He's like every opportunity. He's like, that's what he wants. That's what he desires is this growing, first the entrance into that relationship and then the deepening of that relationship. That's his heart. Um, may not be our heart, um, but, but it's his heart. And, and we see that right throughout scripture that we weren't just something that happened along, that right from the beginning of the world, he chose you. He's like, no, that's the treasure I'm going after. You know, you, you'll hear pastors say, if you were the only one in the world, that's why they say it. Because he says, he says from the beginning, I've chosen you. You're my choice. I pick you. Everyone good? Okay. Can we go to verse th seven? Be good? Now, so, so we have this voice that speaks and sets this thing of this smoke ascending. So the, think of this again. We were, we were picturing this on Broadway. This, this big picture of, of him, uh, the smoke billowing and him arising, you know, it's these, uh, it's, Pretoria um, States Theatre had these wonderful things where the things used to rise up from out under the stage and they used to be able to do all these amazing things. And I can just see this, you know, this, this person arising in the smoke um, and you see this and him, him going up into to the rafters. But as he goes up, something is left 
behind. And that's where we are now. So look, the NIV says, it's Solomon's carriage escorted by 60 warriors, um, the noblest of Israel. I'm going to keep carry on reading verse 8. All of them wearing the sword, all experienced in battle, each with his sword at his side, prepared for the terrors of the night. Just going back to the, the first verse, verse 7, look in the King, um, New King James, it says, Behold, it is Solomon's couch. And in the Moffat, it says, it's the palanquin, it's the palanquin of Solomon. Um, the TPT says, look, it's the king's marriage carriage. The love seat surrounded by 60 champions, the mightiest of Israel's host, are like pillars of protection. They are angelic warriors standing ready with swords to defend the king and his fiance from every terror of the night. Okay, so let's just... The smoke goes up, he goes up, and something is left on stage in this picture. And the picture is, it's a, it's a palanquin. Anybody know what a palanquin is? A carriage of sorts. Yeah. It's, it's seated. Yes. It's one of those things where you see the, the, the often it's, it's, it's veiled. You know, the, you, you have the curtains that you pull across. And it's, 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 it's normally a king and a queen that's carried on it, or somebody high up in royalty. It's normally carried on men's shoulders. And, and, and it, it is, it is, mainly used for marriage it, it, it is a part of their ceremony um in, in a lot of the eastern um traditions is that's part of you would be carried from and to the the celebrations in this sedan this couch this marriage carriage um as he talks at the palanquin so this is sitting now on the stage um and and it's this interesting picture of 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 this this marriage carriage because You'll find that there's there's a lot to it, but let's let's take it a little bit slowly here. Um, but one of the things is, what was her biggest fear about going with him? Remember, when he called her to go up the mountains, what was her biggest fear? Did she think she was able to? The, the mountains were a challenge for her. She was didn't like the unknown. She didn't. She's like, I can't do mountains. You can do mountains. Mountains are your thing. Yes, yeah, she was really comfortable. And she also there was the fear of the unknown. The fear of this looks too hard, too difficult. You know, it's like if somebody had to say to me, "Do what Judy does," I would have the, the, exactly the same reaction as she does of going, "Um, no, I, I I know my abilities, and that is just too much for me. Can't climb mountains. It's it's slippery. It's dangerous. I it's not really my thing." But the interesting thing, which he didn't say at the time, was actually we see he never intended for her to walk up herself. He was going to carry her because this is the picture. We'll see now that this is, is for the, the, the bride and the groom, to, the bride and his fian, uh, groom and his fiance to be carried up to glory, to be carried on, 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 on this um, palanquin, this, this marriage carriage into the, into the glory of the marriage ser ses session. And that chapter four will all be on the marriage. But it's so, it's, it's, it's so interesting. I was really challenged by this because sometimes with God, he's going, come, come with me. And I go, I come up with all the reasons why I can't possibly, like, I don't know how to do this. I can't, this is too scary. I don't have this I don't have that saved I don't have money or whatever and here all he was waiting for was a response from her in the right direction which she did she ran to him and clung to him and go I'm not leaving you and he says right now let me show you what this looked like and here's this this marriage carriage that she gets to ride on and he will carry her into the mountains um into the heights and so there again is this challenge of going oh god let my first response not be the logical response in all the the reasons i can or i can't or i shouldn't or whatever but let it be a heart response because the minute she has that heart response and she runs to him and she clings to him he's he's able to go okay so then let me show you what i had in mind here so, so it's, 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 a, it's a beautiful picture, but it's a challenging picture of going, we, we need to remember that I, I, th I think we underestimate God's grace sometimes, if I have to be really blunt. Um, I, we underestimate that he really does know us. He, he's, he's the good God who wants good for us. And he's not going to do something that is going to make us fall and split our leg open or, or whatever the case is. He, he, his heart is, is that we experience the joy of this with him. Um, and so we see the this this marriage seat, yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody good. Mm -hmm. um, so so, how would you go up to the glory realm? He would take her. He would be the strength. He would take her up to the mountains of glory. But scripturally, this now paints another picture because remember, this whole picture is a picture of our journey, um, of of as a Christian in our walk with God. But this picture of the palanquin 
is a picture of something else in scripture. What else was carried on men's shoulders? The ark. Yep. Yeah. The ark. Um, remember, it was carried um, on, on men's shoulders and there was all those rules of it couldn't be touched mm -hmm. and it had, it had to have these rings that they created to carry it. And so the ark is, the, this, this marriage carriage is a picture of the ark. Why? What is another name for the ark? Because I'm going to use the other name quite a lot. Anybody know? Tabernacle. It was in the tabernacle. The mercy seat. Okay. The, the ark was known as the mercy seat. Um, so we, we, the picture of, of this palanquin is a picture of the mercy seat. Um, but this, so it's this whole picture of, of how we have access into the more of him is because of the mercy seat. How, how we're able to, to, to navigate our relationship and go with God is because of, of the mercy seat. And so we see that the palanquin is this. Of that, that is the, our passage, if I can use that word, um, into the fullness of God. Um, and so again, it's, he, he, he's going, this is about me and you. And it's not you doing things out of striving or your own effort. This is about resting in me and about coming closer to me and turning your eyes on me. Because when you do that, I'm able to work abundantly more than you can ask or imagine and then there's that Zechariah 4 6 verse where it says um, you know the verse well it's not by might not by power but by my spirit God's like that's how I work in your life I, I'm not asking for exertion I'm not asking for for, for striving I'm I'm just saying trust me because the way I'm going to navigate the journey of your life is by my spirit um and again it's, it's that invitation to the more of him okay so we're going to have a look at this this arc, the Ark of the Covenant. Um, but before we do that, just be, going back to the verse um, 7 and 8, this palanquin, who was it carried by in, in, in the Song of Songs? What does it say? Warriors. Yep, 60 warriors that were there with swords at hand. So they weren't there just, they were, they were there to protect you. So they weren't there just to carry you, they were there to protect you, to, to guard you, to, to, to make sure that you were safe and that you were able to take this journey. Yes? Mm -hmm. Now, it's very interesting. This, this 60, I, I went back to the, 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 the rabbis have a lot to say about the 60. And I just want to give you some of the things that they talk about the 60. You all have the picture of the, of the, the, the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. That white curtain which I'm sure being in the desert would have been a cream curtain, but never mind, we'll go with white. Um, <laughs> yes. So, so it, it formed the, 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 the full contour of the tabernacle, the place of meeting. So the, it cordoned off the area that was, would have been the outer court. And then inside there was, that, that you'll see the picture where the, 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 the menorah in that was, was the holy place. And then at the back end, there was the holy of holies. There were three, there were three sections to the tabernacle, yes? Mm -hmm. Okay, but the three sections were protected and carried and enclosed by this curtain. And again, it, it was a white linen curtain which resembled God's righteousness and we were covered and protected. And, and this meeting place was held in place because of his righteousness. But have a look at that Exodus 27 below. Just look at the highlighted points. These were the posts. So there were 20 posts that they tell you on the different sides. So the south side, there were 20 posts. The north side, there were 20 posts. Go on the next page. It says, on the east side, there were 10 posts. And on the other side of the east side, um, uh, on the east side, yeah, where are I? Um, sorry. And then there were, um, on, the, on the other side, on the short side, there were three posts. And there were another three posts. And then at the bottom, it says there were four posts, which was the base. So, on your picture, those are the three and the four in the middle, which is the doorway. So, how many posts? Maths. Can you add those quickly? <laughs> <laughs> Cheat. <laughs> yeah, they were sixty. So, so the the, the it, it again it, it all of the sixty points to this thing of of that which protects your intimacy with God, your meeting place with Him, that which that which holds you in the fullness of His grace and His righteousness. So in the sixty they, they 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 understood that the sixty warriors were like a picture of the sixty posts of the tabernacle it was that spiritual picture of of she was carried and protected by that 60 yeah everybody understand the correlation there now there, there are two more that i want to look at 
the other thing that they look at it is they say they they, they talk about it being warrior angels because of the swords and the, the way they explain it they're warrior, warrior angels and if you look at that Luke 4 11 it says um, God has given his angels instruction to protect you from harm for angels hands will hold you up and keep you from hurt, hurting even one foot on a stone so again it's these pictures of, of the angels holding you up protecting you keeping you holding you Psalm 190 Psalm 91 sorry um, I just given you those two verses but there's a bigger section in the scripture but you can go read it but it says god sends angels with special orders to protect you wherever you go defending you from all harm if you walk into a trap they'll be there for you and keep you from stumbling so the understanding is the way god protects us and how he surrounds us we all have angels encamping around us you, you've heard of of them speaking um, and people talking about warring and ministering angels yeah. that's the picture that, that they're using here so the, the, the mindset is we God protects us he protects us by his angels and then this one when I was doing do you remember I did the teaching on the blessing that number six mm -hmm. a while ago mm -hmm. and we unpacked the Hebrew of, of, of what it all meant and whatever there was something that came up while I was doing the research for that and I remembered the 60 back in this this part of, of Song of Songs because I'd done it before but very interesting. Let's go to that numbers. It's on the next page. Number 6, 24 and 20 to 27. It says, we all know this passage well. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So they shall put my name on my children of Israel and I will bless them. Okay, but that verse, the, the part 24 to 26, the actual blessing. That, if you remember from, from the sermon, it, they were pronounced daily over the children of Israel. When they were in the wilderness, it was it was that was seen as their covering, as their blessing. It was that which which enfolded them and enabled them to traverse the wilderness into the promised land. Yeah. Now in Hebrew, that blessing is made up of sixty characters, and so their belief is it's both and it's yes it's angels but it's the it's the it's, it's the promise of God it's his blessing over our life that sustains us holds us protects us beautiful hey mm -hmm. so so it's just such a rich picture um of it so so they they get really excited when they read this in song of songs because they understand and they go oh, you know this is she she's been upheld by upheld by the blessing and the promises um of God and he's he's warring and ministering angels that are camping around him around her protecting her and her intimate relationship with him this place of meeting because that was what the tabernacle was called everybody with me mm -hmm. any questions we good there's always something more hey mm -hmm. <laughs> um now just going back to the other picture um of the courtyard i i there's an understanding, and I did this in garments, in the high priest garments, but, but just as a recap, remember that the tabernacle is seen as us today. We are the tabernacle of God. So the meeting place, God meets us. I, I don't have to go to a special place to meet God. Everybody remember why? I, there was a one picture I gave you, but it's segmented, but I, you look at it here. The outer court is the body that which is open and exposed the the inner place and um, the holy place with the menorah and all those is is what we call the soul or the mind that which chooses to worship honor god thing and then the holy of holies is our spirit that which engages with god so the picture of the tabernacle is a picture of us okay but now we're going to go even deeper anybody know that they've been looking for the ark of the covenant for a very long time um, there are people who still today, they believe that they one day will find the Ark of the Covenant. I do not believe they ever will. Why? Because it's not needed anymore. It's not needed anymore. Um, and so the picture here, this picture of the mercy seat, we, she, yes, she's traveling on the mercy seat, but in essence, we have become that mercy seat. Mm -hmm. That mercy seat is us. So, so it's it's this beautiful picture of of the, this palanquin is a picture of us becoming the the the, um, the the mercy seat of God of where we encounter Him, and I, I want to just unpack that a little bit if that's okay with you, um, so we can see this this imagery. So let's just uh, you, I try to highlight just to it, it would be easier to find, but have a look at that Exodus thirty seven one to nine. It talks about the ark or the this this um, the the mercy seat sorry um that he was making first of all it says he overlaid it with both pure gold both in um, he overlaid it with pure gold both inside and out and it was made of wood so the picture is the whole of the ark of the covenant was a 
in essence a box made of wood overlaid with gold inside and out which okay publicly here we go these are things you need to start to remember now gold is deity god's presence the weightiness of god's presence wood would be <laughs> us it's it's the dust and deity kissing it's it's that I interaction of of you and i as god's children because of what's happened on the mercy seat we are 100 percent man but 100 percent spirit we are 100 percent his so it's this i it's 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 this the whole box is a picture of my life i am covered inside and out with the glory of God, with what Jesus has done, with, with, with the presence of God in my life. I am now his. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, there's a, um, the next line, it says, and the further on in that line, it says, and made a gold molding around it. Now, in the, if you look on the cross, on the other side of the page, it says the Exodus 25, 11, it says, and shall make it a crown of gold around it. Now look at your picture. Can you see this? what looks like little horns all the way around mm. the, 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 the top of the thing. They called it the golden crown of the mercy seat. So again, a lot of them go, well, that we are crowned, as in Psalm 103, we are crowned with loving kindness and tender mercies. That, that is what the mercy seat has won for us, that crown of being able to, to stand as, as his crowned in the fullness of what he's won for us, his mercy, his tenderness and compassion. Okay, so that they talk, they, they call it the crown. So that's where that is. Um, so go up to verse six at the top of the page. It says, he made the atonement cover of pure gold. Basically the lid. <laughs> if you want to really use layman's terms, the top of the Ark of the Covenant is that what was they called the atonement cover of pure gold. Okay, so again, that imagery is beautiful because atonement is what Jesus has done for us. He has atoned us of our sins. And, and because of that, we're, we're, we have become pure gold. Our sins are removed. Okay, go down and um, it explains the cherubim. But on verse 9, it says, The cherubim had their wings spread upward, overshadowing and covering um, each other. So that covering the mercy seat as it sat in the middle. And then scripture talks about um, that we are overshadowed by his warring and ministering angels so again it's a picture of us the, the angels overshadowing us um dropping down to leviticus at the bottom of that page um and it says and in the front of the mercy seat he saw he shall when i say in front it's that piece between the the angels wings so the lid of 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 the the atonement lid under that the wings of the angel is where they would sprinkle the blood okay so this where that's the picture of where we're talking about so in front of the mercy sheet he mercy seat he shall sprinkle some of the blood and again that's a picture of us we have been sprinkled by his blood and and atoned for our sins have been forgiven um everybody with me um and then across the page exodus 25 22 it says i will meet with you there and talk to you from above the atonement cover between the gold cherubim god's like that's your meeting place that's where we're going to meet it's, it's, it's because, because I, I am in his presence. Remember, we have access into the Holy of Holy. That, that because of the, the mercy seat, that is my position now. And because of that, that's where he meets with me. Because of what Jesus has done. Because of atonement. Because of, of, of that transition. And, and I'm now transformed. I'm that new creation. And those verses will come in just now. I did put them in here somewhere. But we are new creations in him. That's where he meets. And so they often called that the place of meeting. And that's our place of meeting. Is that mercy seat. Um, it's, it's again that place. And again, remember that it was found within the veiled Holy of Holies, which again would be the, the picture of the palanquin, of, of you are found with him within the meeting place, within the veiled palanquin. Um, it's, interestingly enough, the Ark of the Covenant is also called the Ark of the Testimony. It was a, it's a word that my granny always used to use referring to it. We don't, we don't use it very often anymore. Um, but, and and the, the, when you read just now, the, 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 the laws that were written on the tablets were called the, 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 the Covenant of the Testimony. Again, it's the testimony of who God was and who God is. Um, and so, so this, this, this place, my, my intimacy with God is my testimony of my relationship with him, but also to the rest of the world. This is the, the mercy seat, that place of my interaction with him, of, of being one with him, of coming into that, that beautiful intimacy with him because of what the cross has done, because of that atonement. I have now got access to 
be meeting with him um, and and that is that that is is my testimony of the being of my covenant with him I couldn't do that if I didn't have a covenant with him does that make sense mm -hmm. okay but not only are does the outside of the the palanquin or the mercy seat describe us but the inside does what's inside of it describes us anybody before we read the verse and don't cheat what are the three things inside the ark of the covenant or the mercy seat the manna yes a golden vessel with a with a manna in Aaron's rod. yep and the tablets oh, 10 wow. out of 10 wow. you get the wow. you get the easter egg yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well done <laughs> so let's just read it in hebrews 9 it says it contains the golden altar of incense this is the ark of the covenant okay the golden altar of incense even that Incense in scripture is a picture of prayer and worship. So we become the golden altar of incense. I just, there's imagery in this that is just stunning of who we are. And the Ark of, of Covenant Mercy, that is who we are. We are the place of covenant mercy with God, which was a wooden box covered entirely with gold. And placed inside the Ark of the Covenant Mercy was a golden jar with mystery manna inside. Aaron's resurrection rod, which had sprouted, and the stone tablets engraved with the covenant laws. Um, okay, so let's have a look at those three things. The very first one was the golden, the golden vessel with manna. Manna, what was manna? Very quickly. Every day in the desert. That's what the word means. Manna means. Yeah, the word manna means what is it or mystery. So when 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 the Israelites were going, what are we eating? They go, what is it? No, you're eating it. It's what is it? It's, it's yeah. It's a it's a mystery. Um, but even that is that the the, the, sim, the symbolicness of this is that Jesus is that mystery manner inside of us. We're the golden vessels that hold Jesus is the bread of life. He he it is his mystery inside of us. I I love the way it's put in. Um, I'm just going to read if we can read in a moment Revelations and that Colossians verse because it just I it, it's so beautiful um we did this in Revelations where it talks about the overcomers remember the victorious ones the overcomers to everyone who is victorious I will let him feast on the hidden manna it talks about that overcoming the overcomers were who the victorious ones were who in Revelation whom who are they in Revelations we went through those seven things of, and the overcomers or the victorious ones will inherit this or inherit this. What did they overcome? Yes, against who? Against what? What is he's got a name in, 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 in Revelation? The beast. Those who were victorious and overcome the beast. And the beast was what? In Revelations, and when we did this in Revelations, I know it was a while ago, but the beast was what? It's not a person, it's not a thing, in the sense of it's not someone out there. It's the self-love. It's the sinful nature. It's our sinful mm -hmm. nature. Yeah. Each of us, the, the beast, we have to overcome the beast in our life. We have to overcome and be victorious over the sinful nature in our lives. That is the picture here of he who overcomes, he who is victorious, he is overcoming sinful nature. Because you are 666, you are, 666 is not Henry Kissinger or some other person. Henry, 666 is who? It's it, 666 is, if 777 is the number of God, 666 is the number of? Man. man. 666 is us. It, it's the number of man and the beast is in us until he is slaughtered on that mercy seat. The sinful nature is put to death on that mercy seat and there is atonement and then the sprinkling of the blood removes the hold that that beast has and we overcome the beast. We, we, we are victorious over that, that, that sinful nature. 666 six, six, the beast. No, 666 six, six, six is man. Yeah, 777 seven, seven is the number, Seven yeah. is God, it's God's yeah. perfection. So 777, seven, seven, three times is, is a picture of God. So when, when, when what they wanted to use the number of man, it was always one less than God. He was always just below God. And so 666 is the number of man. Um, we, we, Revelation is so much easier to read when we can pass the buck of somebody else's 666. Somebody else is the beast. We got saying, no, it's you. It's actually he's there. Um, and it's about you dealing with the junk inside, the beast inside. Um, but because of Jesus' blood, we have. And that's why seven times in Revelation it says, to those who've overcome, to those who were victorious, this is your promise. And so one of the promises is to everyone who is victorious, I will let him feast on the hidden manna. Who or what is the hidden manna? Jesus. Yep. But let's just make sure. Colossians 1, 26 and 27. 
There is a divine mystery, a secret surprise that has been concealed from the world for generations. But now it's being revealed, unfolded and manifested for every holy believer to experience. Living within you is, is the Christ. Living within you is the Christ who floods you with the expectation of glory. Here we go. This mystery of Christ embedded within us becomes a heavenly treasure chest of hope filled with the riches of glory for his people. And God wants everyone to know it. In other words, Christ in you, the hope of glory is the way we know the verses. But I like how this expresses it because you understand the beauty and the mystery of it. You know, I think sometimes that line rolls off our lips of Christ in you, the hope of glory, that we forget that it's, it's not actually known it doesn't make sense that the god of the universe is is the hope that we carry we get to carry that mystery in these golden jars that he's created um we get to carry the mystery of jesus the mystery of of his greatness and his and his deliverance and you know i think sometimes as christians we take the stuff for granted mm. and we don't see it as a mystery anymore we don't see it as as great and profound and 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 that makes no sense but it doesn't it's this amazing treasure that is a mystery. It doesn't make sense. How did Jesus, how is Jesus able to do this? How is he able to be the hope in us that the world needs? How do we, how is it that we are in him and we get to carry that? The mystery is astounding. And that's, that's the manner that is ours because we get to feast on him and carry him daily. The bread of war about him every day. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that mystery is, that's the point of we'll never know the fullness yeah. of Jesus. Yeah. There's just always more to know, but not just know in our head, but to experience, yeah. to enjoy. Because listen, that manna was eaten and enjoyed and experienced. And, and it, it was something that, that fed them. Those pictures are who Jesus is in us. We get to carry this life-giving mystery in our lives that the world so desperately needs. And hence the phrase, the bread of life. Hence the phrase, I'm the bread of life. Yeah. Um, and, and it's, you know, and again, we go back to communion. It's the picture of him being the bread that is broken for us. Um, but again, interestingly enough, what happened with the manna? How, how did they navigate the manna every day? You could only take enough. But there's a word before that, that, that this is a little bit by the bar, but I, I just love it. It talks about every man, was, there was an ohm given to each person. Anybody know how much an ohm is? I think makes does. I think I've said this before. If you remember, okay. An ohm, because I, I always thought it was a, a yeah. I always thought it was like a, a measurement, like you yeah. get a kg yeah. of manna or whatever. An ohm means the amount you need. You know what? What a big man would have eaten and needed in in manna. It would be very different to what a little kid needed, or whatever the case is, or an elderly granny. And so the picture in scripture is that they collected as much as they needed for that day. But the rule was that they couldn't keep it because if they kept it to the next day, it went, it went to maggots. Except for one day. Yeah. For, for the Sabbath, they weren't allowed to pick anything up. So that, that, that one lasted. How cool is that? God, God is just great. But in, here's the thing. There's a challenge in this. Like God has challenged me lots over the years with of going, Mel, just because you connected with me last week, Tuesday, it's going to maggots by now. Not that there's anything wrong with our relationship, but, but you haven't enjoyed the fullness and you haven't benefited from the, the sustenance and the feeding and the pleasure that I want to bring and the strengthening I have for you today. You know, we, we, we know the verses in Scripture. Your mercies are new every, every morning. morning. Great is your faithfulness. Give us, today our daily bread. Give us today our daily bread. And we, we say these things and they're beautiful and they roll off our tongue as so much of this does. But God's going, can we just all stop a minute? What are you doing with that reality? He is that mystery inside of you that you will never unpack the fullness of. But every day I will pour out as much as, uh, of me, and here's the thing, as you desire. You have as much of Jesus as you want. So I don't get to point at someone else and go, it's not fair, God, that person's all super spiritual, whatever, nonsense. God's like, no, 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 no. I am here in abundance. I want to pour out that treasure of mystery of who my son is and, and all that he carries into every one of your lives. But you have as much of him as you desire. Challenging, eh? But beautiful because that's who Jesus is to us. Okay, so that, that yeah, please do. I came to a while ago, actually, about Nana. It's the only thing they had to eat. And yet, 
you know, they 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 didn't have a variety like protein and this and that and whatever, and yet they stayed healthy. I mean, if we only yeah. ate one thing all the time, we would not be healthy. Yep. But manna, that little thing, was everything that they could possibly need. Yep. And it nurtured them. Yep. Yeah, and, 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 the, and the Bible says they didn't get sick and they, nothing ran out in the whole yeah. of their, 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 their story. So it wasn't just iffy, it was it was the fullness of what they needed so to be healthy. To Jesus yep. well. Interestingly enough, what, what do they talk about? That it tasted like honey and coriander. I'm still not quite sure how that all works together, but yeah. I'm like clearly, I, coriander seeds and honey is what they describe. The, 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 they moaned after a while. Oh, yeah. Yes, they did. Oh, yeah. Okay. But, but do we not do the same of going, oh, Jesus, can't I just have like miracles or can we do this? We do, like, and God's going, no, it's always about me. It's coming back to me. It's, it's, it's about Jesus. It's about that intimate relationship with him. And we want notoriety. And we want, you know, and, and some of those things are fine if they burst from, from him. But we, we want to add. And that's been our hugest problem as Christians. We, we add to the things that we think are important in Scripture. And God's like, all those things are great, but it ultimately is about an intimate relationship. Everything I've done is so that you can have that intimate relationship with my son. But we'd rather do than be in that relationship. We'd rather seek after other things and, and spiritual things, but then seek after the intimacy with him. We're, it's all meant to come from him. Because the verse of in him and from him, all things exist. No other way. Okay, I'm just going to read the, the, the Romans 12 too. It says, stop imitating the, the ideals and opinions of culture. This is that do not be conformed about the way we know that. But it says, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a royal, uh, through a total reformation of how you think. Across the page in Colossians 3.16, it says, let the word of Christ live. That word live is actually the word grow. And I really wanted that understanding for us to get the understanding of it. Let the word of Christ grow in you richly, flooding you with all wisdom and applying scripture. So again, these are, these are things, the Holy Spirit, the word of God, are things that God has given us to be transformed. And, and who, it's the spirit of, 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 of God. It's, it's the, the, the word who is Jesus. It's again, feeding on him, feasting on him, allowing the spirit to, to ignite who he is in our lives. It all comes back to him. Um, that 2 Corinthians 15 says, Now if anyone is enfolded into Christ, this is the point, it's all about him. If anyone is enfolded into Christ, he has become an entirely new person. All that is related to the old order has vanished. Behold, everything is fresh and new. Praise Jesus. He doesn't just fix, staple gun together, glue. It's completely new. And that's who he is. That's what he does. That's what he's doing with this bride. That's what that mercy seat does. Because of that mercy seat, because of Jesus, I am completely transformed. The old is gone. The new has come. Okay. Everybody happy? Yeah. Okay. What is it? So that was the, 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 we are the manna, the golden vessels with manna. The next thing was? Yep. Aaron's right. Um, do you remember the story? Of Aaron. I've just put it there in number 17. I'm just going to read the highlighted pieces. It says, um, tell the people of Israel to bring, you, to bring you 12 wooden staves, one from each leader of, of Israel's ancient tribes, and inscribe each leader's name on the staff, which they did. Place these staves in, staffs in the tabernacle in front of the ark containing the tablets of the covenant. And when they were left there, buds will sprout on the staff belonging to the man I choose. Okay, and then we see further down, it says he found that Aaron's staff representing the tribe of Levi had sprout, sprouted, budded, blossomed and produced ripe, ripe almonds. Quite a feat for a dead branch overnight. Mm -hmm. And so it meant that the Levites then became the priests because this was what they were choosing. They were choosing which tribe would be the priests. So the, the tribe of the Levites, Aaron's tribe became the priest. Aaron became the high priest. <laughs> the squirrel is coming right up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but again, remember, this is a picture of who we are. Who, scripture says we are a royal priest, the royal priesthood. Yes, remember, we are now the royal priesthood. Um, and because of that, we, we get to minister to God and people. That was the function um, of, the, of, of the royal priesthood, was that they would minister unto God and to the people. 
That was their, their place. And that's our place. But how did they do it? How, what was the defining thing? How did God identify who the priests were? He did it through resurrection life. And there, there's a picture in here that is really important. We are the, the royal priesthood of God. But what we work out of is, is our baseline, who we were. We were dead, but we now have come out of resurrection life and are his royal priesthoods. Sometimes I'm not sure we quite get that. Sometimes we live a lot more like the dead, the dead, um, the dead sticks, the, <laughs> the, the budding, um, fruitful, blossoming thing. And again, this is not, there was nothing that man did to make that bud, blossom, and bear fruit. That resurrection life was Jesus. Resurrection life was, was God's power at work in them. And so again, we are his royal priesthood who gets to function, to minister to unto God and unto his people through the resurrection power of Jesus, through that resurrection life that is ours. Everybody happy? Yeah. Okay, the last thing in the box. Yeah. The tablets were the law, broken by man's sins. Um, but where is the law now? God, God, God said when Jesus came, I fulfilled the law. I didn't just, God didn't do away with the law. The law had to be adhered to. That was his, how his system was placed. And so he said, my son will come. And he, the whole point of the Old Testament was to show that no one could fulfill the law. They came horribly short. And God's like, hence your need for my son. So Jesus came and, and that mercy seat was a picture of him coming and taking our place that we could be there and receive the fullness of him. And so now he fulfills that law. And where is the law now written according to scripture? In our hearts. Yep. Romans 2 verse 15, it says there, um, they show that the requirements of the law are now written on their hearts. I don't need to get caught up in legalism or religion. I need to be in a personal loving relationship with Jesus who fulfilled that law, who is the fulfillment of all that is good and all that is God's desire, which is what the law is. It's, it, it's, it's, it's God's desires. And again, as I draw closer to God and closer to Jesus, I, I am able to walk in the fullness of that law, not out of legalism, not out of religion, but out of intimate relationship with him. Anything else, anyone? And again, that, that, that was called the testimony of covenant, the, the, the thing of, of, the, of the law. So again, it's that because I have that relationship, I can walk in the fullness of Jesus. And that's my testimony. I, I can live a godly life, not because of my own strength, not because of my own power, because of who he is. I can live in the fulfillment of that law, not because I'm any better than the Old Testament dudes were who could never do it, get it right. I live there by grace, and I live there by the power of the cross. Yes? Mm. Bev, do you want to move? No, I'm fine at the moment. Uh, we nearly finished. Okay, let's just, just finish up the last. We really, I'm just more just going to read it. But are we all happy with that? Everybody happy with that whole picture? So the palanquin, this, this marriage carriage is this beautiful picture of, of this, 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 this place of, of connection between the groom and his, and his fiance who going, rising up, they're going to be carried off into the wedding, into the, into the connection with him. Um, and that we, in essence, because of what he's done, become that meeting place, become that place of intimacy um, with him. Right, verse the, um, th chapter three, verse verse nine. Um, the the old king, then sorry, the new king James says, "Of the wood of Lebanon, Solomon the king made himself a palanquin. King Solomon made um, for himself a carriage. He made it from the wood of Lebanon." Um, TBT says. The king made his um, made his mercy seats for himself out of the finest wood that would not decay. Okay, so we dealt with it that the king of Solomon is not the king that in this play that we're dealing with. So I'm not even going to go into that. Lebanon, we're going to go way more into the next section. But Lebanon is a is 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 the, the wood of Lebanon was of great quality and that was sought after. It was it was kingly. It was. Um, yeah, it, 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 and, it, and it, the, 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 it has a lot to do with the picture of Jesus, and you will see that as we go along, and I don't, I'm not going to unpack all of that now. But basically the way he sums it up is, is what we get to. The king made this mercy seat for himself. Who is the king? Yes. Who made the trees? Yep. 
Jesus made the trees which created the cross that he died on. That is the picture. That's what it is. The king made this mercy seat for himself out of the finest wood that would not decay. It's never going to die. That is our mercy seat. What Jesus did on the cross, the king made for us, and he chose to do that. It wasn't something that was forced on, 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 on the bridegroom, and it wasn't forced on Jesus. That cross is our only resting place, and we are carried along in the safety of, of the fullness of the cross. That's what we carried along in. It's the fullness of the cross. Everybody good? And it goes on to describe it. So let's go to verse 10. Um, its posts were made of silver, its base of gold. Its seat with uphol um, was upholstered with purple. Its interiors inlaid with love, daughters of Jerusalem. Okay, just very quickly. That are daughters of Jerusalem at the end of this. Um, don't, don't forget that in Hebrew, there's no, pu there's no punctuation. It just is, runs on. Um, so this is the thought, and, it, and, and some of the people have ended it there. But if you see the next verse, it's all about the, 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 the daughters of Jerusalem and the daughters of Zion. Um, so, so the general consensus with the, with the rabbis is actually that we've ended it too late. It needed, because the whole, the whole point is he's talking about how he made this mercy seat. Verse 9 tells you he made it out of the, his wood that he grew. And then it says, he made its posts of silver, its back of gold, its seat of purple, its interiors was inlaid with love. Not by the daughters of Jerusalem. It was by him. So draw that line there. That's the end of the verse. Don't get caught up with the daughters of Jerusalem story. Does that make sense? Um, so very quickly, you will be able to give me the answers to most of this. He made its posts from silver. Silver is... We did it. Redemption. So it the, the posts of this thing, that which upholds this mercy seat, that, that which upholds this palanquin is the red, is, is redemption in Jesus, is, is what he bought for us. It's back, the it's back of gold or it's seats, the other one says a seat. The base of gold is what? Gold is God's glory, God's weightiness. That which is built on and, and the base of it is God's glory, his goodness. Um, it's seat of purple. Purple in scripture is always a picture of, of royalty. Interestingly enough, though, in Hebrew, that word is not purple. It's actually crimson, which is the same color as the crimson thread, as the rope of hope that we were talking about. The blood of Christ. So that which she sits on. Remember, again, it goes with the picture of mercy seat. That's where they would put the blood. That's where the blood was. Her seat is seated on the, on the mercy seat. Its interiors were inlaid with love. That verse is my best. I just love it. That actually all of this was done, not because you were a horrible person, but because he loved you. He, he built this palanquin. He built this mercy seat so that he could usher you out of your rubbish into glory. All of this he did out of love. How cool is that? And then we'll end off with that last verse. So now he turns to the maidens again. So please note, they, they're now not called daughters of Jerusalem, which they have been up to now. They are now called the daughters of Zion. Zion is always the spiritual name for Jerusalem. So the picture here is they are starting to get it. There's a deepening, a spiritual deepening that's happening for them. And they now, from now on, are called the daughters of Zion. Okay. Okay. Um, Come out and, and, and look, you daughters of Zion. Look on King Solomon wearing a crown, the crown um, with which his mother crowned him on the day of his wedding day. This day, he's, uh, this day his heart rejoices. Um, on that, across the page, Isaiah 62, it says, As a bridegroom rejoices over his bride, so will God rejoice over you. That's just on the other, no, it's on, I put it next to because I had the gap, the gap next to it, so it's just next door. Um, so it's this picture of, of he is, he is ecstatic about his bride. He, he is crowned and, and, and with, with her. So I'm going to read the fullness of 10 and 11 in closing because he's now taken the picture of the mercy seat and the picture of this and God's love and he wrote it. And so this is how it, it reads. Pillars of smoke like silver mist. A canopy of golden glory dwells above it. The place where they sit together is sprinkled with crimson. Love and mercy cover this carriage, blanketing this tabernacle throne. The king himself has made it for those who will become his bride. Rise up, Zion's maidens, brides-to-be. Remember, they the brides-to-be. They're the ones who are going to become the, the brides. Come and feast your eyes on this king as he passes in procession on his way to his wedding. This is the day filled with overwhelming joy, the day of his great gladness. 
because he loves his bride and he's so excited to be wedded to her. Beautiful. Stunning, hey? Okay. Eh?